Magic's latest set, Commander Masters, is coming out just around the corner, and it is full of awesome reprints specifically targeted at the Commander format. So in today's video, we are going to break down the top 10 most expensive reprints from the main set of Commander Masters. Let's jump right into this. Starting with number 10, that being Fierce Guardianship. This is currently going for $27.99 and it's an amazing reprint from the Ikoria Commander decks. It's a 3 cost blue instant and if you control your commander you can cast it without paying its mana cost. And it lets you counter target non-creature spell. This is just obviously amazing in the commander format allowing you to counter spells that would kill your commander or maybe even win the game as long as you have your commander out. You don't have to have any mana untapped, and technically, even if you don't have your commander, it's not terrible just to hard cast this for 3. You know, comparing this to something like Force of Will, which is obviously a really good card, Force of Will requires you to exile a card from your hand when you want to cast it for free, which is a pretty significant cost, and if you want to hard cast it just for its mana cost, it costs 5 mana. So this is better than that in a lot of ways in the commander format, although it does only hit those non-creature spells. Overall, it's a must run in pretty much every blue deck, and so it's going for $27.99. Sense. Next up, number 9 is Deflecting Swat. Also going for $27.99, this is just like Fierce Guardianship. It's a 3 cost red instant, and if you control your commander, you can cast it without paying its mana cost, but it lets you choose new targets for target, spell, or ability. It's really powerful as it can save your commander or any of your important pieces for absolutely no mana, but it can also screw up your opponents. If they have a spell that says target player takes an extra turn, well, you can make that be you. If your opponents are just trying to mess with you, you can look completely tapped out in a red deck and still have the ability to change a ton. It doesn't help against things like board wipes, but it can actually be more helpful than Fierce Guardianship as it lets you change the targets of abilities too. So something like a Ravenous Chupacabra coming down, you can redirect the destroy effect to target any other thing on the board. So not only do you stop it from destroying your thing, you get to destroy one of your opponent's things as well. Deflecting SWAT is just really good and it gives red a way to be a little more defensive completely for free. Next up, number 8 is Demonic Tutor, also going for $27.99. I think most people have heard of this card. It's a 2 cost black sorcery that lets you search your library for any card and put it into your hand. This is the best tutor in the game, allowing you to get any card, not requiring you to reveal it, and putting it straight into your hand only for 2 mana. It is currently banned in Legacy and Historic, restricted in Vintage, and really only legal in Commander and Oathbreaker, but in those formats it's still very powerful, allowing you to take decks that are normally singleton 100 cards and get them to be way more consistent. You know Demonic Tutor is good and just know that it's in this set and is something you should be keeping an eye out for if you decide to open a couple packs. Next up, number 7 is San Quan, Lord of Wu. Sorry if I mispronounced that. It is currently going for $29.99, and it is a reprint originally from Portal 3 Kingdoms and reprinted once in From the Vault Legends, and it gives all of your creatures horsemanship, which for all intents and purposes means that all of your creatures are unblockable. Now, it is a 4-4 four, four for 6, which is pretty pricey. It's not necessarily expensive because it's one of the best cards in the game, it's because it was printed in Portal 3 Kingdoms, which is one of the least printed magic sets ever, and once in a From the Vault, which was still a very limited print run product. So this is a it's first time it's seeing a major reprint and I would expect the price on this one to fall more than other things on here. Just note the prices of cards on this list are all pre-order prices and they're all reprints so in theory as more of the set gets opened the prices on these should go down and so you may want to wait a little bit before picking any of these up on the secondary market. But either way this is a card that just really hasn't seen a reprint and so because of that it is currently going for $29.99 but expect that to fall. Next up, number 6 is Finale of Devastation. It's currently going for $29.99, and it's X green green for a sorcery that says search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. This is a really awesome finisher originally printed in War of the Spark and has been creeping up in power ever since. In Commander and in a lot of formats, consistency is key, and so two Tutors and things that go through your library are really important. This not only does that, but it also puts it straight on the battlefield. And if you have a lot of mana, it can just win the game by pumping up your creatures by a ton and giving them haste, often allowing you to use the thing you search for, like a Crater Hoof Behemoth, to just win the game on the spot. Early in the game, it can set you up, and late in the game, it's a finisher. This is just an incredibly versatile card that really hasn't seen a reprint since its original printing in War of the Spark, and as said, seeing a reprint of it is pretty nice, hopefully lowering that price by a little bit. Next up, number 5 is Avacyn, Angel of Hope, which is currently going for $34.99. 
It's a mono white legendary 8 8 with flying, vigilance, and indestructible, and it gives the other permanents you control indestructible. This used to be one of the best things you could cast in Commander when you got a lot of mana, making your board really hard to deal with. However, recently there's been a lot of bounce, exile, and things that get around that indestructible clause, making Avacyn less good. And typically, Commander as a format has just gotten a lot faster, meaning 8 drop creatures in white especially have some trouble getting into the game. And so just in general, there's a lot of times where this will just be sitting in your hand and you have no way of getting it out without cheating it into play with something like Kalia or resurrecting it out of the graveyard. Without cheating it into play, it really just doesn't make the cut for Commander anymore, and so every time it's been reprinted, it seems like the price goes down by a little bit, but it never fully recovers. Now, a big part of that is that every time it's been reprinted outside of its original printing, it was printed into a Master Set or a From the Vault or something with a very low availability, meaning the price on this has never really dropped by a ton, but when it drops, it typically doesn't recover. If I end up pulling one of these, I'm likely to sell it just because it's not going to be that useful to me, and I expect the price to really only go down from here as I don't see Avacyn becoming more playable in the Commander format. Next up, number 4 is the Great Henge. Currently going for $39.99, this is a 9 cost legendary artifact that costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Then you can tap it to add 2 green mana and gain 2 life. Then whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and draw a card. This card just does everything green wants to do. It gets cheap when you want to play big creatures, so it wants you to have big creatures, it wants you to ramp, it gains you life, it draws you cards, it makes your creatures bigger, it just is an amazing card in Commander. It was actually just reprinted as a box topper in Lord of the Rings, and so we just saw a reprint of this, but it's still one of the most expensive reprints in the entire set. The Great Henge just does so much and is so powerful. If you pull one of these, I really only can see the price going up despite the double reprint here. You know, in the short term, you'll see it dip down as people pull these, but in the long run, this is just a card that almost every green deck that runs creatures is going to want to play, and so because of that, it's just an amazing card in Commander, and is why it's going for $39.99. Utterly crazy. Next up, number 3 is Capture of Zheng Zhao. The card's currently going for $39.99, and it's a 5 cost blue sorcery that says take an extra turn after this one. It is almost identical to a blue sorcery named Time Warp that says 3 blue blue, target player takes an extra turn after this one. Obviously you can't make someone else take an extra turn, and the spell can't be redirected to target someone else using something like a deflecting swat, but otherwise they're pretty similar, and that card's only going for about 10 to 11 bucks. The reason this one is so expensive is that it was only ever printed in Portal 3 Kingdoms, and so before the announcement of this reprint, it was going for more than $100. So it's one of those cards that's not only pretty decent, but it was also pretty rare, and that's why it's going for such a high amount, despite it just being similar to another card, that being Time Warp. There's no real meaningful difference between the two, this is just redundancy that was hard to get due to the limited printing nature of the card before this reprint. This is one that I expect to fall, although not to be any lower than something like Time Warp. I'd expect it to be something like 20 bucks after the reprint. Next up, number 2 is Doubling Season. The card's currently going for $59.99, and it's a 5 cost green enchantment that says if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. This is really great at any token deck or any counters deck, and counters and tokens are in every set. Because of that, there are tons of commanders and just tons of strategies that want this in play. Planeswalkers love this. Token decks love this. Plus one plus one counter decks love this. And it's just so powerful that there really aren't that many cards that can compete with it because it does both of those effects. There are actually decks that take advantage of both halves of this, not only creating extra tokens, but extra counters. And it's something that really is only seen preprints in, you know, larger, more expensive sets like Double Masters and Battle Bond, which weren't necessarily some of the most open sets in the world. And so the quantity of these are quite low, despite it being needed in a ton of different decks because it is just so powerful and so versatile. So seeing it reprinted is great, but it is still going for $59.99, and I do hope to see that price fall a bit. Alrighty, number one, the most expensive card you can pull from the main set of Commander Masters is probably not a surprise to you, it is Jeweled Lotus. The card's currently going for $64.99, and it's essentially Black Lotus, but for the Commander format. It's a zero-cost artifact that you can tap and sack to add three mana of any one color, but you can only use it to cast your Commander. This is really good, because most Commander decks are obviously built around their Commander, and if you can get this out three turns early, this can lead to some seriously broken stuff. 
In stuff like CEDH, this is used to get expensive commanders out on turn one, but it can be used technically in all power levels just to accelerate you getting your commander out and typically helps you take over the game with just one card. The card's going for $65 still, it was the most expensive card in Commander Legends, and it is the most expensive card in Commander Masters. This thing is just one of those cards that like is technically wrong to not play it, assuming your commander isn't like five colors, you should be running this in pretty much every deck, although most people aren't because it's expensive and it definitely ramps up the power level. It's really crazy good and I'm excited to see it get a reprint just so that people don't have to pay so much if they want to step into formats like CEDH. Alrighty guys, those are the top 10 most expensive reprints in the main set of Commander Masters. Those are the cards you should watch out for as their prices fall and you should watch out for if you decide to pick up any of the packs from the set. If you guys want to see more content from me, check out this video where I talked about my five favorite new commanders from the Lord of the Rings Magic the Gathering set, and this video where I talked about the top 10 most expensive card from Lord of the Rings when that set came out so that you can get an idea of how things are different between the two sets. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.